Hi guys, JP from FSI panel. On this video, we are going to fly a very short uh, hop from uh, Kennedy to LaGuardia. We diverted this morning due to an airport closure, and now we are flying the passengers and the aircraft back to LaGuardia. So FSI panel is right now setting the cockpit automatically, and we should be ready to depart within a minute. For this very short flight, this is the latest training scenario that you can find in uh, FSI panel advanced edition. So, uh, if you want to try it, just go to the FSI scenario. Panel 001, runway 31 left, clear for takeoff, Canarsie climb, maintain 3000 feet. Roger, clear takeoff, Canarsie climb, maintain 3000 feet, FSI panel 001. <clears throat> Alright, sorry, uh, uh, we were interrupted by the ATC. So, if you want to fly this uh, scenario, you can use the weather that is provided with the uh, scenario. It's a Cavoke weather, and you will understand why and feel free to change the weather as you like fly it with some clouds as long as you can fly the approach that you will find in this training scenario you can fly this scenario as well on any aircraft uh, available in msfs 2020 uh, with the advanced edition of fsi panel all right so everything seems to be ready and i will just use the opportunity to uh, show you something here on the 737 that is concerning the Canarsie climb departure that you can see on your screen. Now we have a couple of restrictions there. First of all, we have to remain east of the radial 039. So you can see there we have a fix in four. Let me show you that in the uh, FMC. If I go to fix, I have Canarsie as the reference and then I have set 039 and 176. This is the radial that we want to fly outbound on this uh, departure. So this airspace on the north here is LaGuardia and this air airspace here is Kennedy. So they want to make sure that you are not going north of this radial, you stay in this area. So this is why we have a departure, left turn toward Canarsie and then intercept 176 and try to stay always in the, in the airspace of Kennedy. So what we have done right now in the FMC, fixing for with the two radials, I have as well here the VOR Canarsie with the radial 176. So if I go to uh, the VOR pages, we are getting the radial later on. Sorry, this is the approach. That's VOR, so we should have the radial. So there is a couple of ways you can fly this. You can, of course, arm VOR lock. But as we will be very close to the station, as we overfly the station, there is a high chance that you're going to overshoot and then come back. So one of the easiest way to do that is to create a pilot waypoint in the FMC. So in order to do that, just go to your legs page. Now you need to pick up the reference on the 737. We pick up the reference, which is Canarsie. Then you just dial in the radial, which is 176, for example. That's the one here. And then just set a very long distance. You just want to make sure the aircraft just fly a couple of miles on this radial until you get further clearance. So in that case, I would just put something like 25 miles. And now if we look at this, we can see that the two lines match perfectly well. So the aircraft will fly in LNAV, a beautiful curve, and should stay nicely on track. So we will, we will uh, try that together and see if it works. So execute. That's the only thing I will change now on the departure. And that was to answer one of uh, your questions that I got on the forum concerning the Canarsie climb. All right, so let's go. We are all set. We have been clear for takeoff, 3,000 feet on the Canarsie climb. So let's go ahead and do the takeoff. All right, parking brake is released. I just want to synchronize my flaps here with my controller. Everything looks good now. We are flaps five. And let's do the takeoff. All right, let's go. 40% and one. Stable, N1 Toga, set takeoff thrust. Thrust set. Eighty knots, checked, total hold. Positive 
Europe. El Nav. 400 feet, we will use the autopilot so we can see what the aircraft is doing. And one. So now the aircraft starts the left turn, as you can see, direct toward Canasi climb. Just toward Canasi, sorry. Zero, zero, one, contact now departure on the 135.9er of a safe flight. 1359er FSI panel 001, bye bye. 1359er. Here we go. Flaps one. Departure LO FSI panel 001, uh, 1700 feet, climbing 3000 on the Canasi climb. FSI panel 001, you're identified. Continue Canasi climb and expect a right turn shortly. Roger, Cotony, continue, sorry, Canasi climb FSI panel 001. Speed check, flaps up. So now we are flying toward this radial, as you can see. So we are on the way to Canarsi, and the FMC will anticipate the left turn in order to take the radial 176. So this is where it could be dangerous if you're not turning uh, early enough. So you see that the aircraft start turning one mile before, and we should be perfectly uh, established on the radial. We will see that happening. All right, 1,000 to level off, everything looks good. Now, if I go to VOR, now you can see here the radial, which is 176 from Canarsi. We can see that here on the right-hand side. And if everything goes as planned, we should be nicely established on the radial outbound without doing any deviation, which works perfectly well. Another way now, of course, will be if you fly in heading mode, I will be, for example, in heading. So let me synchronize the heading before I show you that. If you will be in heading, then, of course, you could fly in Vorlock. That will work as well. But as we are very close to the station, there is a high chance that we overshoot uh, slightly the radial. Right now, the aircraft is in Vorlock, so she will fly outbound on the 176. Or I can revert to Elnav and then that gives the same effect and it's very precise. So myself, FSI I prefer the Elnav 001, way. Climb 4,000 feet and be advised on way 04 is not available in LaGuardia. Expect visual on way 13. Roger, climb 4,000 feet, expect visual approach, runway 13, FSI panel 001. All right, 4,000 feet, vertical speed, 1,000 feet per minute. We're expecting runway 13. All right, so let's see what's happening there. After takeoff checklist, and then we check what it is. It's just uh, something with the air conditioning, and it's gone already. Okay, 1,000 to level off after takeoff checklist. We leave the lights. FSI panel 001, turn right on heading 340, and reduce speed 220, 220 knots. Roger, right heading at 340 and speed 220 knots, FSI panel 001. So, 2340 on the heading. And the speed 220. 220 is above up speed, that's fine, so let's go 220 knots. And let's have a look at the after takeoff checklist. So, engine bleeds are on, packs are. Are they auto here? Yeah. yeah, they were. Okay, auto. Landing gear is up and off, and flaps are up. No light after takeoff checklist completed. All right, so let's prepare this approach. What we need to do here is change the runway. They said we're going to go on runway 13 visual. So, what I will do here is select the uh, visual approach. So, for that, we go to Runway. If it's side panel 001, you can now contact uh, LaGuardia approach on 120.8. Have a good day. LaGuardia 1208, FSI panel 001. Bye bye. So, as you saw, this scenario is quick. So, this is to let you fly quickly. No issue. You will see that everything is easy if you go step by step. LaGuardia approach, hello, FSI panel 001, maintaining 4,000 feet. FSI panel 001, good morning, you are identified, continue heading 340 and expect a river visual runway 13 in Aboria. Roger, continue on the heading 340 and expect a river visual runway 13 LaGuardia, FSI panel 001. All right, here we go. So what I was doing here, I set the runway 13, I will set a three miles final. That's good to line up the aircraft on the final. Execute and now 
river so let's have a look at the chart for the river approach and see what we can do here so the the, uh, the approach start as you can see at the waypoint vz so what i will do i will just set vz on top here as the first waypoint here we go it's in front of us execute after that we could enter all the points here uh, in the fmc but i want to fly visual with you so what i will do just the last waypoint zulu lima november golf romeo will go right there execute and after that i will just put my runway extension like this now if i go to the cruise page i want to make sure that i have 4000 feet that's it that match my actual altitude another thing i want to do is make sure on the pmdg you need to press acorn and uh, i will put the speed at 220 knots on the real aircraft you don't need to push acorn execute and now if you go to the descent page make sure as well you put 220 so the aircraft will not accelerate when we start descent now we can check as well that our altitude is 4000 feet that's fine otherwise we will get an off schedule descent and we are basically ready now if we look into the performance i'm just setting my approach speed for flaps 30 i will select the auto brake 2 and i will set the, the ILS as backup. Zero, zero, one, descend 3300 feet and you are clear river visual runway 13 Maintain 3,300 feet until the uh, statue, until I build the statue of Liberty, please. Order descend 3,300 feet, clear visual river 13, and we'll maintain 3,300 feet until I beam the statue of Liberty, FSI panel 001. All right, so we have been clear for the approach, so we're descending 3,300 feet now, and I will just set the ILS, which is 108.5. Only on my side is good enough. We will set on both sides, but here single pilot and the aircraft and the flight is very fast. So we'll just set it here as a reference as we are doing to land manually anyway. All right, so we are clear. So this is the first uh, waypoint. You can see the point, the, the, the bridge here. This is called the uh, Verazato Narrows Bridge. And then we have to go to the uh, two piers. We can see them right here. So let's do that. We are turning right toward the two piers now something like that 3300 feet we can see a very beautiful view on manhattan here in front of us we have the statue of liberty so we should be just left of it flying along the hudson river until we have the uh, columbus university columbia sorry university where we'll turn on final beautiful so another way you can buy some time reduce your speed we don't need to fly to 20 knots so what i will do i will start to reduce the speed to enjoy the view so let's go flaps one and i will bug bug one so now we just have to look at this waypoint once we are over at the bridge we are going to turn right on heading 040 right now that's fine 040 that will bring us over the hudson river and toward that waypoint which is where we turn final beautiful see the statue of liberty should be on the right hand side when we fly so that seems to be the case now you have as well the side panel 001 final descent is approved contact now tower on 108.7 and the Final descent approved, 1187 FSI panel 001. Thank you, bye-bye. Let's go over the tower, 1187. And what I wanted to mention, this is my VNAV indication. So what I will set for now is 3000 feet as final descent is approved. So I will set 500. And we are going to arm VNAV. When we do that, we have VNAV path, the speed is bug one, and we expect the aircraft to follow a nice descent toward our final approach. All right, let's contact the tower. Tower, hello, this is FSI panel 001 on a visual runway 13 vi uh, river. FSI panel 001, Tower, very good morning. You are number two for the approach. Continue, and in case of low round, climb 3,000 feet on the runway. Roger, continue approach, and in case of missed approach, runway 3,000, FSI panel 001. Beautiful, look at this view. The passenger, I think this is probably one of the best approach you can have in New York. 
All right, so let's concentrate so we don't screw it up. You see the top of this end here. This is my uh, VNAV indication. I'm flying toward the waypoint, the Columbia University, right there, where we turn final. Speed control is good. Let's go ahead and do the uh, descent checklist and landing checklist, uh, approach checklist. So descent, precision landing altitude is set. Recall checked. Auto brake two. Landing data, we have VRF uh, flaps uh, 30, 1, 4, 5, and minimum is 500 feet, and approach briefing is completed. All right, approach checklist, we have an altimeter at 2995, 2995, and we are reading the same value. All right, so now we are going to descend. You can see here the indicator. We are in VRF path, so we are expecting the aircraft to descend. Let's go flaps 5. And as we go flaps 5, the aircraft will bug 5. And now we expect the aircraft to descend. Here we go. And we will turn just before the university to the right to intercept the final approach course. Look at this Central Park with the lake. Beautiful. All right, let's concentrate on this approach so that we don't screw it up. FSI panel 001, one three, clear to land. Clear to land one three, FSI panel 001. Clear to land, okay, gear down. Let's turn right now. Vertical speed. Flaps 15, I will arm the approach. You don't need to arm the approach if you want to fly visually. I just do it to help me as I'm single pilot. And we can arm the speed brake. Good, localizer is captured. Now we are flaps 15, turning final. Let's go flaps 30 and we set the, the approach 150 knots and we can do the landing checklist. But before doing that, let's have a look to the right. How is it for the passenger? Wow. This is just great, isn't it? That's just perfect. This is a, a very nice approach. All right, let's do the landing checklist. Mr. Approach altitude, 3000 feet set. Landing checklist, engine start switches continues. Speed brake is arm. Landing gear is down, flaps, 30 green lights. Landing checklist completed, and we are stabilized 500 feet for the visual approach. So I will disconnect and do a manual landing here. All right, autopilot comes off. Auto throttle comes off. And I will turn off the flight director as well. I should turn the flight director on both sides, but here it's too late. We are close to the ground, so I'll just leave it like this. Two and two on the profile, looks good. I'm on the puppy. I see the localizer seems to be a bit off. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There we go. Touch it down. Reverses, speed break up. Sixty knots, out of reverse. And FSI panel zero zero one, take a second right on Alpha and contact ground one to one point seven. Wish you a very beautiful day. Roger, so gonna write on Alpha and ground one two one seven FSI panel zero zero one. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, second right. So that's the first right we're not taking. So I guess we cross right there, and then we will contact ground. So is that Alpha? Yes, you can see here on the sign. This is Alpha. So let's vacate here and turn to the right on Alpha. Here we go. And then. I will let FSI panel do the after landing flow for me. Here we go. 
and ground, 1217. So FSI panel should have selected the frequency for me. That's the case. Ground hello, FSI panel 001 uh, with you on Alpha. FSI panel 001, uh, ground, very good morning. Welcome to La Guardia. Continue on Alpha and your stand today is, let me check that. You have a stand 47 today on your left. I wish you a very nice day. Thank you. Uh, Roger, continue on Alpha and our stand is 47, 47 FSI panel 001. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, here we landed. Uh, is GS6 working? I had some issues with GS6 in, uh, in La Guardia. I don't know why it doesn't start. So we will just continue to the stand which is right there this is stand 47 so the after landing was nicely done let's continue there okay so this is a very short flight this can happen and the reason for this scenario is imagine you're flying back to uh, la guardia this is your destination but unfortunately in the morning the airport is closed for any reason mm -hmm. then you have to divert we diverted to kennedy and now we have to fly back the passengers and the aircraft to the base, so to uh, La Guardia, for the aircraft to continue uh, its journey. So this is the reason for that short scenario. So it goes very fast, as you can see, it's only a 20 minutes flight, even less. You can fly it with the automation like I did, fully visual, uh, do it as you like. Uh, if you fly single pilot like, like we do in the sim, it's probably better to use automation. That will let you have a better overview and otherwise feel free to change the weather to make it a little bit more difficult you can add so you can add some clouds as long as you keep the weather minimum for this approach which is 3300 feet and five miles all right let's do the parking here and i hope we don't screw it up that's the last bit of the flight and please subscribe to the channel before i forget that will help me do a lot more video for you guys okay turning on stand 47 we can turn the lights off and here i should be nicely aligned on the uh, 47 did did they turn off the lights yes perfect and we will try to stop on the stop bar one so how did what did we do here not too bad just move a little bit forward we need a couple of extra feet here Here we go, and I will stop the aircraft right there. Parking brake is set, so now we are in the cockpit, parking brake is set. What we need to do is to put the APU generator on the bus, boat on the bus, that's fine. Now we can switch off the engines. Once the engines are off, the first officer will start by turning off the beacon light then it will turn off the Sybil sign and then a couple of things to do on this 737 we are going to switch off the pumps except maybe one for your APU then you will make sure your hydraulic is off and then finally you give some air to the passenger because right now there is no more air in the passenger cabin so you just put the APU bleed and the APU bleed will basically go here to the left pack and we make sure we open the isolation valve to give some air via the right pack to the cabin the cab the cockpit is on the left pack the cabin is on the right pack so you need to have the isolation valve always open on ground once this is done one more thing to do you make sure that you turn off here the transponder and now we can read the parking checklist let's see if i find that one for you i think that's the one yeah the shutdown fuel pumps are off probe heat are automatic that's the one right there then we have the uh, hydraulic panel set the flaps are up the parking brake for the time being is still set the engine start lever are cut off and the weather radar is off shutdown check completed that's it we managed to fly the aircraft to uh, la guardia and I hope you enjoyed this short video. Let me know in the comment down section below any questions. I will be very pleased to answer any of your questions. As always, stay safe and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.